Hi, today I'd like to talk about my scratch-built Warlord Titan. To build this, I took an image of the epic scale model and the drawing in the Warhammer 40,000 Apocalypse rulebook that gave it its size next to a silhouette of a Warhound. You see my Warhound next to it. Now mainly, this is built from plastic card, which keeps the weight down or makes it strong enough to stand up unsupported. I've also included several household odds and ends. For example, bits of pens, which are handy for making weapons. Glue pot lids, which those of you who have seen uh, the video about my scratch-built levers will have seen used before. And also, Parts bought in specially. That's the seal of the Adeptus Mechanicus from Forge World, made of resin. Now, I just pan around so you can see a bit more of the detail. The legs have got 40 millimeter plastic tubing at the centre to give them rigidity, and then with some uh, old mark, uh, old felt tip pens to give them some detail. On the feet, you notice some pistons. When I first put this thing together, it began to tip backwards. However, by adding the pistons at the rear, they not only added more detail, they also prevent it from tipping over. More spare parts. I found a model looks a lot better if you just put even the most basic of details on to break up flat surfaces. I'll finish coming around now. There you can see the Aquila. That was produced by placing the silhouette of an Aquila downloaded from the internet and printed out underneath a one quarter millimeter sheet of plastic card then just scoring over the edges. My attempts to measure out and uh, just draw the Aquila didn't work properly. Now overall, that model is about three feet tall and it weighs three kilograms or about six and a half pounds. So it's light enough to transport but it's far too bulky to simply move the whole thing in one go. Now, I knew that was going to happen so I've designed it to come apart. Now being able to remove the shoulders also gives me the option of switching to a support missile launcher with a Vortex missile on. And in the weapons on the shoulders themselves are just held in with a bolt. So I could switch to something like plasma blast guns or Vulcan mega bolters just by building those weapons and fitting them in place of these double barrel turbo lasers. The arms are held in place using a soft drinks bottle top and the lid is a lot easier with two hands there we go gives a screw thread And that turns around because there is a plastic rod as an axle, a small metal pin to hold it in place. And it means it clips on without the need for glue. Now inside, the, the, uh, the part of the bottle that expands out just behind, I've trimmed back to provide a flat edge along and glued another plastic piece in place so that even if the glue wasn't strong enough to hold, there'd still be a block on that spinning around. The other arm does the same. It's a bit, that one's a bit stiffer to get off, so I'm not going to demonstrate that in this video, but only one hand free. Instead, I will lift the body away. You'll notice I can lift this with one hand. That's how light it is. There you can see the hole in the bottom of the body, which corresponds to a spray can lid 
that's been placed on the on the legs to act as a peg to go into it now there's a disc of plastic card just inside the base of that so it's uh, more than just the vim of the spray pot lid that's making contact with the top of the legs for the glue and then the final separation comes when I lift the legs out of the feet and like the joint at the waist again this is just a peg in this case it's actually two pegs one there that fits into the foot and then a narrower central peg that will come right down into the balsa wood base you can see them 18 halves here large hole and if I lift it up and let light shine through you can see the narrower hole in the balsa wood base and that lets me transport the whole thing actually in one go as well there we go I hope you've enjoyed that thanks for watching and uh, see you soon with another video hopefully